Is the novel coronavirus a biological weapon? I don't mean to peddle any conspiracy theories here, but I do think we need to take a look at what everybody is saying. And there are some Iranian officials claiming that it is a biological weapon. We've got some Russian officials claiming that it is as well, and they're pointing the finger at the United States. Israel, some Israeli officials are also saying, yeah, it might be a biological weapon. They're claiming it was China that unleashed it. China hasn't really said anything, and the United States is saying, no, that is a hoax. So let's go ahead and break this down a bit. The former Iranian president came out claiming that the novel coronavirus was a biological weapon man-made in a lab. Mahmoud uh, Ahmadinejad, sorry about that, claimed, this is his tweet. He says, it is clear to the world that the mutated coronavirus was produced in lab manufactured by the warfare stockhouses of biological war belonging to world powers and that it constitutes a threat on humanity more destructive than the other weapons that target humanity. So he also tweeted out a letter that he had sent to the uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations, and in it talks about how they believe that this was a biological man-made weapon that was unleashed in a lab, but he doesn't give any evidence of this. But uh, we will see where there might be a little bit of, you know, reason to be suspicious. Also, Javad Zarif, Iran's foreign minister, called the sanctions on Iran an act of medical terrorism. So he also at first made some... Uh, in, he insinuated that this could have been a biological weapon made in a lab unleashed on the Iranian people. And then he's also come out saying that the sanctions on Iran that the United States has are an act of medical ter uh, terrorism. Iran is not able to get all of the supplies that they need, and they're, they're very much suffering because of the sanctions. And that is causing... Uh, you know, a lot of panic and a lot of a, a lot of death and a lot of and the virus is very strong in Iran. So um, this is what Javid Zarif says in his tweet. He says real Donald Trump is maliciously tightening U.S. illegal sanctions with aim of draining Iran's resources needed in the fight against COVID-19 while our citizens are dying from it. The world can no longer be silent as U.S. economic terrorism is supplanted by its medical terrorism. So Iran has the last count that I saw, which was, I think, yesterday, they've had about 429 deaths and over uh, 10,000 people infected. And they've now asked the International Monetary Fund for $5 billion in emergency funding. And they're saying that the United States, they haven't really placed blame on exactly who they think unleashed this virus on them, but they do feel like they had this unleashed on them, that this is not something that naturally would have occurred in Iran. And let's go ahead and take a look at a map to see what they're talking about, because it does look a little bit suspicious. When you look at the map, look at Iran here with 10,075 cases. Now, this was from yesterday. But look at the surrounding areas. Look at Afghanistan, seven cases in Afghanistan. Look at over here in Iraq, 71 cases in Iraq. Look at uh, the, the Arabian Peninsula. I mean, you've got 80, 74, 18, 45 in Saudi Arabia. You know, you've got all of these small all numbers surrounding Iran, but you've got 10,075 cases in Iran. And if you look at the countries in between Iran and China, look at here again, if you look at the map, you've got India with only 73. I mean, India is a densely populated country, and they only have 73, yet Iran has 10,075. Now, some people say, well, the reason why Iran got it was because China and Iran have a strong trade partnership. Well, China has a strong trade partnership with many countries around the world, and yet those countries are not seeing thousands and thousands of coronavirus cases, not like Iran. And Iran is having a, a, a really difficult time managing the virus. They've got a, a high death rate going on in Iran. So people are kind of raising an eyebrow and saying this looks a little bit suspicious that, you know, look at over here when you when you take a look at all of the the areas surrounding China, um, you know, China, of course, had over 80,000 cases. And you've got, look at these numbers, 49, 10, 39, 73, 1, 1, hardly any cases. And somehow the virus was able to jump from China all the way to Iran with 10,000 cases in Iran, and yet all the surrounding nations don't have nearly as many, including nations that have very strong trade agreements with China. The United States imports more from China than I think any other country, and yet we're not seeing 10,000 cases. I mean, not yet. We definitely could because the virus spreads, but for Iran to get it so quickly 
And so intensely, this is why people are raising an eyebrow to it. And it is suspect. Now, look, when you think of Italy, which we're going to get to Italy on this because the Russian officials, um, they've pointed a finger saying that Italy is also a target of this type of terrorism. And we'll get to why that might be. But you know, when you first look at the the pandemic that's going on and you see China with 80,000, OK, that makes sense because that's ground zero. Right. But uh, and, and Italy makes a lot of sense, too. I was living in Italy last year and I can tell you there are loads and loads, millions and millions of Chinese tourists in Italy. Italy is the number one tourist destination in the world. There are millions of Chinese tourists in Italy. So it makes a lot of sense that Italy would be a very hard hit country considering it's like one giant amusement park in Italy. Um, I mean, the tourism in Italy is is massive. So that to me made sense. But then the question of Iran with 10,000 cases, that doesn't make as much sense. Iran is not a big tourist destination. You know, who what, what how many Chinese are showing up in Iran for tourism? Um, that doesn't really it that doesn't make as much sense. So it is a bit eyebrow raising. It's a bit eyebrow raising. Now, what do the Russians have to say? So some Russian officials blame the United States. They say this was a biological weapon unleashed by the United States. Igor Nikolin, he was an official who used to be on the Russian Biological Weapons Committee. He claimed that the coronavirus is an American biological weapon that is used to defeat its enemies, including China and Iran. He said, listen, animals in China have been sold and consumed and eaten for thousands of years, but the coronavirus has not been transmitted to humans all of those years, but in the last 20. So he's saying... Um, you know, they've been eating these animals forever. And so why suddenly are all these viruses cropping out of China from eating animals? Now, I think a really logical explanation to that would be that we now pump animals with loads of hormones and all kinds of things in order to mass produce um, animals. So sure, there is. To me, it makes logical sense that we would see a lot more viruses and issues coming from animals because we're what we feed the animals is genetically modified and we're genetically modifying the animals. So, you know, it's kind of bound to get back at you. But he's saying, you know, his theory is, listen, something else is going on. He says that this is the fourth most prevalent virus in China. He says, I think it's not a coincidence, but it is a design. He says, quote, because the Americans appear. Now, this I had to translate these quotes from uh, they originally were in Russian and then they were in Persian. And I actually translated these from Persian. So they're not exact, but uh, they're pretty close. He says, quote, because the Americans appear to be bound by a series of agreements, they have moved labs outside of the United States to prevent catastrophes in their country. He said of the reason for such labs around China. So he was saying that there's all of these labs that the United States has set up all around China in various regions, including in South Korea, in Taiwan, uh, in Pakistan, all around the world, the United States has set up these medical labs. And he's saying that the United States doesn't want them on American soil, so we've been putting them in other countries. He says, we know that something happened, such as the outbreak of anthrax virus in the U.S. Army's Institute of Infectious Diseases in Washington, D.C. in 2008. The Americans also refused to sign the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty and said we would not implement it because we have trade secrets and do not want to tell anyone what we're doing. Beyond that, thousands of Chinese tourists and businessmen come to, come to Russia, but there are no viruses. So he's saying, look, no virus in Russia. We got thousands of Chinese tourists, thousands of Chinese business people coming here. But suddenly Iran has got all of these, has, has all these virus cases. Why not Russia? When he was asked, do you believe this virus was designed and programmed and was also transmitted directly from China to Iran? And it's not a coincidence. He said, I believe this is not a coincidence, but rather a virus that goes selectively to countries that are considered enemies of the United States, namely China, Iran, and some EU countries, including Italy, as we've seen. So uh, he's saying, connect the dots. This is suspect. Chinese businessmen, Chinese tourists go everywhere in the world. And yet really hard hit countries are China, Iran, and Italy. This is what the Russian official is saying. Now, some Israeli officials also believe it very well could be a biological weapon that could have come from China. Orly Levy, she's a, meta, a member of the Israeli Knesset. That's their 
parliament. That's their Congress. Um, She says, quote, this is not a result of eating bat soup, but was a lab engineered virus in some form or another. She said in an interview with Army Radio, Levy added that the state of Israel is used to combating biological weapons and it is impossible that life should stop because of the coronavirus. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Danny Shahom, who holds a doctorate in medical microbiology and who for over 20 years was a senior analyst for Israeli Defense Forces Intelligence for Biological and Chemical Warfare, said, so that guy seems pretty legit. He says, quote, coronaviruses, particularly SARS, have been studying and studied in the Wuhan Institute of Virology and are probably held therein, said Shahom. In principle, outward virus infiltration might take place as either a leakage or as an indoor unnoticed infection of a person that normally went out of the concerned facility. This could have been the case with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But so far, there isn't evidence or indication for such incident. So this guy who's a reputable guy says, we don't have any indication indication that this is what happened, but it very well could have happened. Now, they're pointing the finger at China. So he's saying, look, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, they've been studying viruses. They're doing weird stuff with viruses in there. So the virus could have somehow leaked from the facility or maybe somebody who works inside the facility accidentally got infected and they left the facility and then they went and infected a bunch of people in Wuhan. He's saying that's pretty possible. Could have happened. We don't have evidence of it, but it's possible. So the the question that the Russians brought up about Italy So the question many of us have is, well, why would Italy be a target? I mean, it kind of makes more sense why China, if the United States did unleash this as a biological weapon in some way, it makes sense why China would be would be a target. Uh, We're in a trade war with China. We are trying to pressure them into bending in the way that we want. It would make sense that you would want to maybe unleash a virus that's going to be a bit, uh, uh, you know, it's going to keep them busy for a while and it potentially is going to harm their economy, kind of making them reach a point of desperation. That makes a bit of sense. Same thing with Iran, right? I mean, if you were a terrorist organization or if you were a government that didn't like another government and you wanted to somehow cripple them, I mean, we've seen that we've been doing economic sanctions on the countries we don't like. We continue to economically sanction them. The Iranian people have been rallying. So they've been having these economic sanctions against them from the United States. And the Iranian people understand that the reason why their economy is tanking is because the United States has been putting these debilitating sanctions on them. And they've been rallying over and over and continuing to point the finger at the United States. They're unwilling to topple their own government, which is why you'd put in economic sanctions. You do it so that you pressure the people to a point to where they hit a point of desperation and they topple their own government. They start blaming their own government. Well, it wasn't really working in Iran. It's also not working in Venezuela. Um, but when, uh, the Iranian, so the, the idea would be to get them to a point of desperation. So if you were to unleash a virus in Iran that sort of began to put a lot of pressure on their medical system and in turn, a lot of pressure on the government, you might be able to then make the change you want to make. Right. So that's the theory around that. But why Italy? That's a big question. Why Italy? If that was the case. Now, Italy, to me, it makes sense, again, why Italy would end up with so much of the virus. There's a lot of Chinese tourists in Italy, more than anywhere else in the world, uh, maybe minus the United States. There's a lot of Chinese tourists in the United States. But, but okay, so let's, let's entertain this. Why Italy? Well, because about a year ago, Italy signed up, unbeknownst to the European Union and unbeknownst to the United States, everybody was blindsided last March in 2019, when Italy signed up to be a part of China's new Silk Road. Nobody knew that the Italians were going to do this. The U.S. government was blindsided by it. Mike Pompeo said he was blindsided. Everybody said, well, you know, we didn't know what the Italians were doing. Sure, they were going to China a lot. These Italian officials were going to China. But they said, the Italians, they're kind of sporadic. Uh, We don't really know what they're doing. And so we just didn't realize that they were signing up for the new China Silk Road which was a slap in the face to the EU and a slap in the face to the United States. So this is coming from the New York Times. It says here, this was from March of 2019, Italy's deal with China signals a shift as U.S. influence recedes. This month, as the United States continued to engage in a trade standoff with China and leaders of the European Union banded together to demand an end to unfair Chinese business practices, Italy took another route, China's new Silk Road. 
In a move that signaled geopolitical shifts from west to east, Italy broke with its European and American allies during last week's visit by President Xi Jinping of China and became the first member of the group of seven major economies to officially sign up to China's vast new One Belt, One Road global infrastructure project. In front of an audience of top diplomats, diplomats, prelates, and government officials, all eager to learn more about China, Mr. Conte, which is the Italian prime minister, spoke admiringly of China's efforts to become a world leader in, quote, technology and innovation, leadership that we know is very contested by the United States. So the Italians knew what they were doing. They knew this would be a slap in the, in the face of the United States, and they publicly stated it says the United States, in fact, sought to stop Italy's joining of the Silk Road. This week, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said he was saddened by the development. So they were blindsided by this, and then they tried to talk Italy out of this. Italy said, no way, we're signing up for the new Silk Road. This is going to be good for the Italian people. And they said, so we're going to go ahead and do this partnership with China. That was a huge blow to the United States. And so there is... Uh, you know, if you're going to go down this conspiracy theory road, which is what we're doing here, then you would see why there would be this desire to take a virus that seems to originate from China and try to cripple Italy. Because then that would make Italy say, maybe we don't want to have this Silk Road, this like direct link from China to Italy where they can import goods, services, and viruses. That would be a something to uh, make Italy think, right? So when you go down that road and you see that there's reasons for our country to not like Iran and to want to debilitate the Iranian econ economy, and when you then connect the dots of saying, you know, we didn't like the fact that Italy signed up for China's new Silk Road, and so maybe we'll think we'll make Italy think twice about this by, by uh, unleashing a virus on them, that would make them maybe rethink it, it kind of makes you think, you know, maybe there's something to this conspiracy theory. So the other big question to ask then is, um, has the U.S. ever used biological weapons before? You know, is this something that is in the United States arsenal? And the answer is, look, I mean, the U.S. had an official biological warfare program that officially began in 1943, and it officially did end in 1969. However, we do know that the United States has been using biological weapons well before 1943. We know the colonizers were using biological weapons when they unleashed smallpox on the natives. And there's reason to believe that the United States never really fully stopped using and developing biological weapons. During the official program of those 27 years, the, the U.S. developed six mass-produced battle-ready biological weapons in the form of agents that caused anthrax, rabbit fever, uh, brucellosis, Q fever, Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus, botulism. Also, a type of food poisoning was produced as an incapacitating agent. In addition to the agents that were ready to be used, the U.S. program conducted research into the weaponization of more than 20 other agents, including smallpox, plague, yellow fever, typhus, bird flu, and the toxin ricin. Besides the numerous pathogens that afflict human beings, the U.S. had developed an arsenal of anti-agricultural biological agents. These included rice stem rust spores and the causative agent of rice blasts. And uh, a U.S. facility at Fort Terry focused primarily on anti-animal biological agents. The first agent that was a candidate for development was foot and mouth disease. So besides foot and mouth disease, five other top secret biological weapons projects were commissioned on Plum Island. The other four programs researched included RVF, Rinderpest, African Swine Fever, plus 11 miscellaneous exotic animal diseases. The 11 miscellaneous pathogens were blue tongue virus, bovine influenza, bovine virus diarrhea, foul plague, goal, uh, goat pneumo, uh, pneumo, pneumoniatitis, mycobacteria, N virus, Newcastle disease, sheep pox, Tesher's disease, and vesicular stomatitis. So I think the answer to has the U.S. ever used biological weapons before is a resounding yes. The United States has unleashed these types of warfare in the past in order to uh, get, peop get uh, whatever we want in wartime or maybe outside of wartime. So... 
Um, now, be you know, the problem with biological weapons is you can't control them, right? They're harder to control and you're going to end up with collateral damage. But is the United States OK with collateral damage? Well, yeah, we've seen that the U.S. is OK with collateral damage when we bomb nations, when, you know, we, we take out buses of kids and and villages with children and women. And, um, you know, collateral damage is just part of the game. And if they if we're going to say, you know, if we're going to go down this road and if this virus was unleashed on China as a biological weapon and then on a, on Iran and on Italy, then perhaps those that decided to unleash it felt maybe a little morally better about it because they realize it doesn't affect kids. Uh, healthy adults don't really get affected. It's just more of a, it definitely affects older people who are high risk individuals. And it's definitely debilitating to an economy. Look what it's done to those nations. Now look what it's also starting to do in the United States. It's also created a lot of panic, but look at what our government was doing, right? Our government was sitting there saying, this is no big deal. So did they maybe know? Did they understand what they were doing? And they thought, no, we got it controlled and contained. It's only in those countries that we didn't like, the countries we decided to unleash it on, and we're going to be fine over here. And maybe that's why our government's response was so flippant about the virus. Um, but you know what? The, then, then you have to take into consideration travel patterns and, and a whole host of other things. And so in order to maybe also not have the blame put on the United States, once Russian officials and Iranian officials were starting to say, hey, something's a bit suspect. And once the Israeli officials came out saying, yeah, I think this might be a biological weapon. Um, what, you know, then you, you got to you got to shield yourself from blame. and You got to say, OK, now we're going to start shutting down things like big events and NBA and and all of these things. So I just wanted to put this out there because it is being talked about in the news in uh, obviously not in our mainstream outlets, but the what the Iranian officials are claiming of this being a biological weapon that's been unleashed on them, uh, what the Russian officials are saying, this is being reported around the world. It's just not being reported as much here in the United States. So I wanted to bring your attention to it. It is interesting. It's interesting to think about and it's possible. So, you know, like I said, I don't mean to peddle conspiracy theories, but we do have to think of all angles and all possibilities in times like this because um, biological weaponry is very real. It is something that absolutely could be unleashed on populations. And what we're seeing is we are not prepared if another country were to do this to us. That is one thing we are seeing and uh, the, the damage that something like a biological weapon could cause. It's very scary. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Um, when you subscribe to the channel, it helps boost the algorithm so that more people watch the show. Thank you for watching.